So this morning we are continuing with our Lenten worship series entitled, What Are You Up To? We began on Ash Wednesday where we talked about storing up treasures in heaven and our oversized mason jar here on the altar represents storing up things for heaven, treasures in heaven. And the following Sundays during this season of Lent are all designed to help us think about ways that we can do that, to store up treasures in heaven. So Ash Wednesday was store up. Last Sunday was come up out of the baptismal waters. And today is take up, take up your cross. Suddenly now we're in the middle of the gospel of Mark. Mark likes to do things fast, and Jesus has been doing a lot of things lickety-split in these first eight chapters. He's been healing people with all kinds of diseases and troubles and disabilities. He's been telling lots of parables, feeding thousands of people with just a few scraps of food, walking on water, standing up to the criticism of the religious leaders, and even reaching out to people who were not Jewish like he was. That's what Jesus has been doing. What is he up to? He gives a quick answer in this morning's gospel reading. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Deny themselves and take up their cross. Take up. We use that phrase sometimes, take up. I think I'll take up knitting. I think I'll take up skydiving. Actually, I haven't heard anybody say that. <laughs> sometimes we say things like, I've got something I'd like to take up with you later, right? But that's not the kind of take up Jesus is talking about here. He's talking about the cross, taking up our cross. And it's funny because over the years, a lot of us have taken that phrase and, and we find ourselves saying things like, well, that's my cross to bear, right? If I just look at ice cream, I put on 20 pounds. That's my cross to bear. Or more seriously, my husband has Alzheimer's and I've been taking care of him for 20 years now. That's my cross to bear. That is a heavy burden. But that's not the kind of cross that Jesus is talking about here in this passage, I think. He's talking about something very different. In this passage, Jesus tells his followers that he's going to be rejected, betrayed, he's going to suffer greatly, and he's going to be killed. And then he says something about being resurrected. This is tough stuff to hear. You know, as we read this passage, even now, we can kind of feel the stakes rising. Suddenly, Jesus is saying there's more to being a disciple than just following along with Jesus and watching him teach and heal people. Here he tells his disciples, it's way more than that. If you want to be my disciple, if you want to be a follower of me, says Jesus, you've got to do more than just watch and tag along. He says, you've got to take up your own cross. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Well, now this is not really what the disciples thought they'd signed up for. In those days, they had a very different idea of who the Messiah would be and what the Messiah would do. And just moments before this passage, Peter has gotten all excited saying, oh, Jesus, you're the Messiah. And probably what he was thinking was, finally, here's the Messiah who's going to overturn the government, put us back in charge so that the throne of David will be back in charge the way it used to be in the good old days. That's what's going on here. It's not suffering, not rejection, not death. Prestige, power, dominion, here we come, says Peter. Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Or he might have said, 
shut the door on the devil, which we'll hear about more later. Jesus was saying to Peter, you're thinking like regular human beings. This is not the way God does things. To be a follower, to do God's work, is to take up a cross, to stand up for the gospel of love, God's message of love for all, to dare to let go of some things that make us feel safe and accepted, to take ourselves out of the center of our universe, and put others there instead. Maybe even to suffer, perhaps even to die. Now there's a marketing plan that's really gonna catch on. Join our movement, come suffer with us, woohoo! But here we know from our study of the Bible, from watching other Christians, we know that's not the way Jesus called us to go to, to, it is the way he called us to go, to be different, to dare to love, to dare to stand up to powers that aren't love. For God's strength is not displayed in power. God is found in a radically different place, in places of uncertainty, in places of danger, in places of suffering, in all the places that we usually think God must be absent, that's especially where God is present. But it's tough to understand. The disciples wrestled with this mightily. But there are others we hear about in the Bible who caught on to this message of what it meant to be a disciple. The widow who gave up her coins. Simon of Serene who carried the cross the woman who anointed Jesus for burial after he died, blind Bartimaeus who received his sight and then followed Jesus all the way to Jerusalem and all the horrors that happened there. These are people who found and heard Jesus' message of what it meant to take up the cross and follow. And even today, opportunities abound for you and me to do the same thing, to take up our cross and follow Jesus, to live more sacrificially in our lives, to serve others, to act with love, compassion, justice, and peace. Sometimes it's scary. Sometimes if so, you, we hear someone making a racist remark, it's easy to just let it slide. It's much harder to speak up. Sometimes we can see where it is that we are called to carry our cross, to take up our cross, by looking around us. I've got a picture I want you to see, I think it's ready to go, of something I've seen around the church, and perhaps you have too, over in Hartford Hall. We have these bins where we collect things to give to others, to serve others. And I invite us as we walk by these bins and other things like it in our church, to look at them and think, maybe that's a way I can take up my cross and serve others. I was thinking about, trying to think of other examples this week, and sometimes the Holy Spirit shows up right away and, and the sermon preparation goes well. Other weeks, the Holy Spirit's a little slow for some reason. I think it's more likely that I'm a little slow. But finally, last night, the spirit came through. I came over for the ham supper to help out with that. And I heard a story. I heard a story of, of someone who did take up his cross and suffer. And it was our brother Warren. And I warned Warren I was gonna talk about him. I don't, I will never do this to you without warning. Our brother Warren was busy in the kitchen slicing potatoes. And he accidentally sliced off more than a potato. And the band-aids, I understand, didn't quite do the trick. And, and he had on one of those gloves. Where'd my gloves go? And others around him began to notice that he had a band-aid on his thumb, but there was redness sort of seeping further down. And finally, someone said, you, we've got to go take you to be looked at. And so Warren ended up at urgent care. And then I understand at the emergency room, right? 
here in our midst, he's okay, he's with us. But here in our midst, we have a suffering servant, do we not? I don't know if you find this inspirational or not. <laughs> but it's pretty clear to me, sometimes taking up our cross, sometimes serving Jesus does bring pain and sacrifice. And perhaps you and I will be called to do similar things in the coming days or weeks. But that's why it's called a calling. Nobody in their right mind would choose it. But Jesus said to us, if we would follow him, if we want to be his followers, we must take up our cross, deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. We have examples around us of people who have done that to show us the way. Let's you and I keep our eyes open for ways that we too might take up our cross to follow Jesus. Amen.